Now that we've reverse engineered the string manipulation code used throughout the program, let's move on to the next function. It may seem like we've spent a lot of time just to reverse engineer one line of WinMain, but you can already start to see some of the fruits of our labor. It's not much, but at least the beginning of this function is clear, and we can start to give some better variable names. Next we come across this function, which passes a pointer to the same variable as several other functions. And if you glance up here, you can see that there's a fairly large gap between this variable and the next, so this is either an array or another, or another structure of some kind. Looking inside, we can see that this kind of expression, where it takes the first parameter, adds an offset to it, and treats the result as a pointer. This is a dead giveaway that we're dealing with another structure. What it's doing with it, however, is far from obvious. We can see that it's setting an integer value at offset 261 to negative 1, but that's all we know. <coughs> so let's go back and look at the other functions that take the same parameter. Yeah, this is the same offset as before. And it's being passed as a first parameter to the, to the get file size system function, so we know that this integer is actually a file handle. Now let's look at the next one. This one's much crazier, and if you're not careful, you'll get confused. See how the the function ha now has three parameters? Well, before it had two, so let's go back and see what changed. Previously, the V8 argument was the first one, but now it's the second. So we can actually re ignore all this stuff related to uh, the first parameter. Uh, so what matters is the second parameter, which apparently is not used anywhere. But if you remember, the function calls can be deceptive until you first step into them. You'll see that it is in fact being passed to this method. So, <clears throat> not only that, it's being used, it's again using a file API. But this function looks a bit weird, so we'll go back and see what else we can find. In fact, this is clearly constructing a path of some sort. So we'll see if we can find where the file is actually being opened. This is interesting, and it's clearly file-related, but it doesn't have anything to do with the structure we're investigating. Nonetheless, it's pretty simple, so we'll decompile it. So it takes a file name, actually a file path, and... Um, returns something depending on the, res the result of this. You can look this up in MSDN. I don't remember exactly what it returns, but what I do remember is that if the file is not found, it returns invalid handle value, which is negative 1. And so it's checking if the value plus 1 equals doesn't equal 0. Now negative 1 plus 1 does equal 0. So what this is really checking is whether or not the file exists. So we can name this function does file exist. And I think that's good enough. So if the file exists, so now let's try this one. Hmm. It has another parameter now. And again, it's the same structure. And this looks like what we're looking for. This create file API not only creates files, it can also open them. So I'm pretty sure this is what we're looking for. So let's start decompiling this. Uh, 
And the second parameter is the path to the file. The first parameter is our structure. Then it takes a couple other parameters. We don't know what they are yet. And we've seen this number before. This is just max path, so it checks that the name is within bounds. Ah, right. And this is weird. It seems to be prefixing the file path with something from a global variable. It's multiplying i by 4, and then treating the value there as a pointer to a string. Also, this loop is only ever executed once, so i will always be 0. It will only ever test the first item from this global array. Let's go see what's there. So I'll double click on it, and there's a pointer to this, which if you look in the preview window, just points to some zeros, which means that the this array contains a pointer to an empty string at least. <coughs> so let's see if this array is used anywhere else in the program. So I'll hit X to find the cross-references. And this is a function we were just looking at, so we'll look at this one. See how this text is all brown? And if you press F5 here it says please position the cursor within a function. This means that according to IDA's analysis, this function is never used by the program. It could be wrong, but it's almost always right. So let's go back and change the type to make it clear what it is. It's not an array of characters. It's an array of character pointers. String pointers. Now back in the function, it's, it's a bit clearer. Um, since i is always 0, this is always going to point to the first element, which is an empty string. And that means that this whole thing is basically a no-op. So we'll put a comment in here by pressing slash. Um, so that we don't have to think about this in the future. Let's create the structure based on what we've seen so far. Once again, we're faced with the choice of deciding whether this is a general file structure, or a more specific structure, or just a piece of yet another larger structure. If we go back and measure the distance between these two variables, it's the 100 and... Two hundred and seventy six bytes, one one four hex. And um we know that there's we know that the structure is at least two hundred and sixty five and two hundred and sixty nine. We know it's at least two hundred and seventy bytes. That means that the structure is taking up almost all the available space uh between these two variables. Now it's possible that one or more of these variables also belong to the structure, but we don't know that yet. Also, we can see that these functions are used pretty often, but we still don't know whether it's really a general file structure or um, something more specific. We we'll just assume it's a general file structure, and if we're wrong, we can fix it later. So go here and press insert to create the structure that we want. Let's call it file. And looking at the code, well first we'll make this uh, struct file pointer. Same with this. If we go back where we were, ah, we should make Oops, that was a mistake. If we go to this function and make it a struct file pointer. Now 
we can see that it copies the path to the file into the first part of the structure. Since this path is being checked to be no greater than max pass characters, and because the the D word, the handle, is stored to offset 261, which is max path plus 1, I think we can assume that the beginning of the structure is taken up by the string holding the path to the file, and that it is 261 bytes long. So let's create that string. We'll call it S path. And <coughs> Now you can see here, now that we've refreshed, you can see that it's uh, taking this file pointer and indexing it with an offset of 1. What this basically means is that it's trying to access something past the end of the structure and that we need to enlarge the structure. So um, this is 0 bytes past the end of the structure, so the very end of the structure there is a D word. And beyond that, there's another D word. And after that, there's a, uh, a byte. So we can use the D key to create three more fields. Now we know that the first one, this one, is the handle to the file. So we can press Y to give it a type of handle and call it h file. Now this negative one value, this is actually the constant invalid handle value, which uh, Windows returns if it can't open the file. These other two fields, we still don't know what they are, so we'll ignore them for now. Now, as before, you can search for this create file documentation in MSDN if you like, and use that to replace some of these constants, or these uh, magic numbers, with some symbolic constants. So by pressing M, you can search for the appropriate name in here. Now, I actually happen to know that this is a generic read. Um, I believe the second one is the the way in which it looks up the file. I could be wrong about that. I might be wrong about that, so let's just look it up. This is the share mode. So, the file, share, read. Next one is the security attributes, and then the creation disposition. Which in this case is open existing. And this should be the file attributes, normal, and the pointer to the template. So this call is a bit clearer now. It's basically opening an, an existing file for read access. So with that, we can name this function file open read. So let's take a look at these other subroutines. Uh, this appears to be a subroutine that outputs, well, it clearly outputs a message to the, to the debugger as well as shows a message box. And given the way it's being used here, it seems to be used to output error messages. So let's call this um, show error message. And you can see that it takes a variable number of arguments 
And in fact, this is passed to the vs printf function. So we know that this second argument is a printf style format string, which we'll call it ps format. And since it takes a p, uh, printf style string, I'll put an f on the end. This first parameter appears to be a function pointer, and it gives us the signature right here, so we can use the, that as a type. And we'll call it pf handler. Don't know what it's for. I guess it just calls it for whatever reason. Anyway, my guess would be that this has something to do with um, perhaps changing the video mode and then changing it back. I don't know right now, and it's not important enough to find out. But we basically know what the function does. It shows an error message. And I doubt this returns uh, returns anything, so you can remove that. Now we go back, and there's only one thing left to decompile, which is this. And this is pretty simple. This uh, takes the file pointer, and it closes it. And I don't think it returns anything. So we can just call it file close. You can't mark this one as complete because you still don't know what these extra parameters are. But now we know what this function does. It simply initializes the file structure, so we can call it file init. And once again, I doubt it returns anything. This simply returns the file size. Now this one is more complicated. It appears to have something to do with reading data from the file. However, it also has a lot of other strains code in here. Let's give it a look. So it's signed to v6. We know v6 must also be a file pointer. And here is a function that supposedly takes no arguments, but in fact takes a file pointer. And this calls set file pointer, which uh, seeks within the file. <coughs> so we can get the symbolic name for it. So what this does is it seeks zero bytes away from the current position. <clears throat> Basically, it doesn't change the file pointer at all. And then it returns the new file pointer, which, since we didn't change it, is the same as the old file pointer. So basically, this tells us the current position within the file. And this is another function that takes a file pointer.
Now this uh, also calls set file pointer. So we know it takes the not just a generic D word, but the this file seeking enumeration. Now I don't think it actually has anything to do with the time zone here, but rather it seems to be using negative one as a synonym for file begin. So what this function does is seek to a new position. Now this loop is a bit strange. It starts out and gets the current file position, and then at the end of the loop, it goes back to where it was before. Since this doesn't change, every iteration is just going to keep going back to the same place. So I think this loop probably doesn't really represent the file, the program structure very well. And as you can see, at the end of every normal iteration, it'll break. Here it breaks. So the only way it'll actually get to this part is if it goes into here. So it uh, asks if you want to retry. If you do want to retry, then it goes back to where it was before and tries again. So that's what this loop is actually doing. This is a bit strange. We'll see what this is. Takes a file hint pointer, reads two bytes into an integer buffer. So apparently this just reads a 16-bit integer from the file. returns it. Hmm. Seems to be basically doing So if this flag is set, then it reads two bytes, and reads the minimum of this value and the actual value passed in. Read file returns true if it's successful. And seems like if this value is less than the bytes it was supposed to read, then it's going to seek ahead to the end of this block. So regardless, it'll end up at the same place. And also, if uh, it doesn't read the full number of bytes, it'll set the remaining bytes to zero.
Alright, well, that's pretty straightforward. And if it fails to read, then it, this flag is true, it prints into a buffer. And does something complicated with that buffer. I don't want to go through all this right now. I'll just assume it's reporting this error to the user somehow. And this is actually not the pointer to the file, but the pointer to the um, file name. Anyway, so I think this is basically a general file reading function, except for in the case that this is true, in which case it does some weird stuff. This is another file close method. It's probably a dis destructor, but I can't say for sure, so I'll just call it file close too. Let's see which one is more common. I'll give that one the shorter name. Alright, as before, I think it would be a good idea to find these file functions and sort by the address to see if we can find some other file functions nearby. So, if we Look at the one above, it doesn't seem related. This doesn't seem related. If we look below, this one does seem related. So let's decompile this. So it takes the file, the path, same two parameters we saw before. Checks the length against max path. So this always overwrites the file, opens it for write access only. So apparently this function is a file create method. So you keep going through these the addresses. This also looks like a, another file method. Hmm. 
Oh, this writes to a file. Again, we have this weird thing where it writes, reads and writes two bytes. Oops. Now here we're enlarging a variable, an argument, and it's warning us that um, if it's too large it'll overlap with and destroy other things on the stack. Now generally it's okay if you're enlarging something that's um, less than 4 bytes to something no more than 4 bytes. But if you enlarge something from less than or equal to 4 bytes to something greater than 4 bytes, then you may be destroying something. But in this case, just going from char to word should be safe. And anyway, we know that it's writing two bytes from this variable, so it wouldn't make any sense to pass in one byte if it's writing two. So we can be pretty confident that it's actually passing in an integer and not a char. And we keep seeing this kind of a pattern where if this field 109 is set, then it shows an error message if some operation fails. So I think it's safe to say that this is actually a debug flag, where if this is set, it um, outputs error messages. Let's go back to the open methods, make that change there as well. Okay, so now we're back in this generic file writing method. We can see that if this field is set, it writes the size of of the data being written. So it seems that if this flag is set, then every read and every write, uh, every chunk that's written to the file, and every is prefixed with its length. And when the file is read back, every ch it also reads the length and uses that uh, that length in the read method as well. So I don't know why it's doing this, but I think we can have enough information to give this a better name now. We can say okay, has chunk headers, maybe, or has chunk lengths, something like that. Once again, I don't know why it's doing that, but it seems to be what it's doing. And we'll again go back and rename these. Now here, once again, we see it's writing another 16-bit value. Now as to why this is duplicated, my guess would be that actually these methods are not simply writing 
these methods are actually writing unsigned values. As you can see from here, it's actually comparing to a value nearest an unsigned value and it's casting it. So perhaps it's unsigned to begin with. And so this is actually an unsigned int. The same here. This is an unsigned int. Which means that these are for signed ints. Strange. Oh, okay, that's obvious. This is a read method. Here, these are the same thing, except it's reading and writing 32-bit integers. And hmm. this is strange. I suspect that this is actually relating to a structure that happen just happens to have a file at the beginning of it. And it's not actually a file, um, a gener general files method. And this appears to be the same thing. The reason I say that is that it's accessing things that would be far beyond the size of a normal uh, file structure. And uh, we know that there is there aren't 77 bytes available in the functions that we've seen so far that have used a file structure. 
So this is almost certainly a larger structure that just happens to include a file structure and not a file, file method itself. So I think that we've decompiled all of the file related functions in the program and so now that we have string reading, uh, string manipulation and file manipulation we can start looking into code that reads and writes the files, data files in the game.